Hello and welcome back to Bricking It and today we're going to be building the next part of our Diagonally Moments mock but as you can see we're going to be building Ollivanders so let's get started okay let's start with our cover so this is going to be the cover of the build portion this is going to be integral to the design as you can see we've used some of those Diagonally stickers just on the cover to make it look like an Ollivanders book and I've gone old school, I've gone back into the past. And when I was a kid, you'd often get stickers that would bridge across multiple bricks. So to me, this is nothing unusual, but I'm sure there are purists out there currently spitting out their pumpkin juice, unable to believe that I've actually stuck a sticker across multiple bricks. But I have, so you've got to deal with it. So as you can see, Ollivander's again has been extended across the spine, just adding those two extra plates. And we've got a four by holding the spine together instead of a two by. So this is a regular um, plate studs on the outside of the spine, so I could use the regular curved pieces. And let's get started with our build. So first things first, let's build Ollivander's windows. So this is the basic construction for the main part of our Ollivander's facade. And as before, we've had to make some sacrifices to get a rough approximation of what we want. Where we can't quite have the exact levels of detail that we did. But we can still get our two bay windows. And that's our main feature. Obviously those nice railings at the bottom have just been replaced. We've got some cylinders in there doing the job of representing them. You can see there's some stud bricks here and here, and that's to hold on our signage. So let's install that now. So our signs live inside the other book cover. Much like the official build, instead of being built like Weasley's Wizard Weeds where out of two of these one by threes plated together, these actually follow the opposite type of curve. So instead of being tall and butted together they are narrow and butted together but as you attach them to these stub bricks they actually form quite a nice soft curve around our bay windows so once those are installed you can see it just helps us get the alignment we want for our bay windows and then these pieces at the side just complete the details there. So because these are only built on single uh, stud bricks, they can be a bit flexible and they do tend to wobble. So you've got to work a little harder than with Weasley's with the Weezers to make sure everything is nicely aligned. Last bit of signage is going to be the wand maker sign just above the door. We're going to finish off our bays by capping them with two of these pieces. So it's just a curve edged plate, some tiles on top in dark gray, and that will show us where our line's gotta be. So there we have our bay windows, and these are gonna install into the book with the studs on the back of the bracket just at the very end of the page like that. Now you may well be saying, how, how on earth are you going to close that? Well, this again works slightly different from Weasley Wizard Weezers in that the position of a lot of the parts during the building style are different from during their book style. So what I'm adding now is a bunch of dark tan brackets just with a wide cheese wedge on top. And this is just gonna help us, that one's missing by design, to give a bit of edge to the wall. Because although those bays make a nice window, they do not help us have any kind of wall space. So our bay window is just gonna sit against those cheese wedges there. And that'll neaten up that edge on that side. So for the other side, as you can see, we just come right up to the edge of the hinge. So 
So we need to handle that a little bit differently. So this side, again, we have that row of cheese wedges, but this side it's attached to a selection of snot bricks on this curiously colored and shaped part. So this is the edge of scribulus. You can see it's just a couple of uh, one by eight plates running up the side. And these are held on by these snot bricks here. We've got a run of six snot bricks. And then we have some odd shaped curved ended and curved ended here. This is because we're gonna have another hinged wall which I'm going to show you the build of momentarily. And we just need to avoid some conflicts as we go along. So this is our thin wall pillar. You can get an idea of how that's made up. Just one by three little plate. And we're going to install that again with the two brackets right at the extreme end of the page. There. Like that. And that allows us to just settle our second bay window into position. Okay. Now Ollivander's, of course, is accompanied by Scribulus on the official Lego release build. And we're just going to build the frontage of Scribulus right now. So our build starts, as all good moments builds do, with some bricks and brackets. This is going to form the bottom layer and attach into the bottom of the book. And then just on top of that, we're going to have a curious arrangement of bricks here. So the whole end, for reasons you will see later on, of this build has got to be made of rounded bricks, just so we don't get any moving brick conflicts. So I've had to make it up of a little strange selection of plates and cylinders and tiles and one of these double-ended round bricks and they're all going to sit just here and that's going to be the bottom window ledge for our build here's our front door it's going to sit next to it and then we have our window build now because we can't make round-ended windows this also needs to get those edges out of the way. So we've had to build our window on a hinge. So we've got a dark blue hinge, top and bottom, just a little plate on the top there, just so we don't get any stud conflicts as it moves. And that shows you why we needed these tiles on there, just so our window can rotate into and out of place. Now above the door, we have a huge collection of tiles all interlocked. I could have used bricks in a couple of spots on this, but I just found it was stronger if it was all interlocking tiles because we do need to be able to slot this tile in here and make sure we can have tiles to facilitate our rounded bricks on the end. So in the end, I just made it all out of tile and so we've got a couple of bricks on the end. These are gonna sit up here above our window that completes the bottom half of our wall with our flexible window the top half of the wall again straight edge because of a window so we need that to avoid conflicts so this time the entire window hinges just there and the rest of the structure just made up of some gray one by twos and masonry bricks again with our tiles on the top here can sit our scribulous wall in there. If we bring back Ollivanders, can place that onto the mock. So that once it's in, you can see it makes a nice front for our building. So our buildings wouldn't be complete without some signs. So here we have a few more of these one by three curves, a couple of plates on the back just to flatten the bottom and this top pair just pushed out by one stud each and that's going to go here above the window and it covers up kind of those strange bricks giving us a much more regular appearance and above the door just to break up our lines and make it a bit more interesting to look at I'll have 
Under the scrupulous sign there. So let's have a look. So this is where we are. Here's Ollivanders and Scribulus, made up with techniques we've seen before. Let's just have a quick adjust of our window. So you know you've got it at the right angle because it will sit perfectly flush in against those tiles. So, as you can see, Ollivanders is built against a black book. So looking in through those windows, you don't see any odd colours or bricks and the yellow glass really helps with that just so you can get a nice look inside i have got some bits and bobs coming yet again waiting on some final ordered pieces and what we can do is just sit them inside behind the window possibly with use of a bracket plate instead of a one by two just here we've got a couple of one boxes from the original olivander set they're coming in the post and I very well may decide to build up some bits and pieces on the inside of the windows. But I think, again, for me, where it's displayed is a high shelf. So being able to just see the outside of the building is quite enough. And the black behind the windows of Scribulus just doesn't detract the eye from seeing what we want it to see. So now, obviously, because of these signs, as you saw, I had to put them on, they don't quite fit inside the book. So we need a second book, which is handy because we've got a bit more build to add. So while I was filming this video, there was a knock at the door and a brick haul arrived. And part of that haul was my two wand boxes, bricks, I found on at Brook Owl this time instead of Brick Link. So these are my two one boxes. These are hopefully going to somehow be displayed in the window of the shop. Haven't quite decided how I'm going to do it. I'm sure I'll update either in a video in the future, possibly when we review Diagonal at the end, or maybe even on that Instagram page, which is Bricking It Lego Mox. Uh, so, as you can see, these stickers are very poorly aligned and the grips are uh, grips. bricks are super grubby. So I think I'm going to have to utilise good old Robin Hood Bricks' hot tea technique to help with realigning those stickers and give everything in the order a good bath. Lovely. So here we have the second volume of our Ollivander's build. So this is purely a storage volume. So much like, I'll refer you back to Weasley's Wizard Weasley's again. Just a volume for storage. So it's pretty ugly and everything's just crammed in as well as we can. So let's start off with the first of our roof extension pieces. This is just built up of some tile and brick layers. We do have an extra wide piece at the back and then that's going to connect up to this, oh, to this longer part here, just right there. And that's going to form a top of the front of our building and we need a little curved rounded fronted bricks on the top because of the corners back here on Ollivander's just set that Let's move these forward on there these guys fall back into position and there we have the front of our building likewise for scribulus have had a little topper extension before now as i said there's this extra layer of um studs across the back and that's so we've got somewhere to add our chimneys. I'm going to have one there. And over here, we've got one and two. Now, unfortunately, we don't get to have the lovely crooked chimney that the main build has. And these are just really facades of chimneys, like everything else is just a facade. So it just gives us a bit more visual interest. 
And then our final piece on the front here is our hanging sign on the front of our module. And as you can see, Ollivander's is a little bit wobbly. Really the only thing giving it any depth to help it stand are these uh, fronts of the bay. But as it's on a shelf where it doesn't really get knocked, and there's not going to be much play involved, it's just for display. And you can see that makes quite a nice Ollivander's with quite an interesting roof line. We've got all the details that we have in the main build, but just reduced to a couple of studs of depth. Okay, so that's our mock for display. Let's pack this all away, ready to go back into our covers. So first things first, we're gonna take our chimneys off and largely putting away the top of our building is just the reverse of getting it out. Not a huge amount of work to do. Oh, except that and what happens. I have to replace these plates. There we go. Let's bring in our cover. So this bit goes on this little bracket here. The main build fits onto the roof. This little bit of roof sitting onto it. Just close that and make sure there's no conflicts. Excellent. Our chimneys have got their own brackets here on the cover. And just sit two up and one down. And we have our 3D sign, which we can just attach here onto the spine of the book. We do have a few more bits that need to be stored away inside this cover. So we're going to remove this entire section of doorway and windows just to make life a little bit easier for us. Now getting off the sign above the door is a little bit tricky. Oh, he's destroyed it. What a buffoon. Thankfully, being so lightly assembled, it's easy to get back together. So much so that I'm not going to do it on camera. So with a little bit of editing magic, here we are back together, fully assembled. We're just going to take off our signs from the front of the windows. We also need to just remove the tops of our bays. So there is our set of bay windows. Ah, oh, that's the issue. There we go. And these are all ready to store away now. So we'll do those in a moment. First, let's finish off in here. So our signs will just sit on the bottom here. Above the door sign, it's going to go up here. Oh, goodness gracious, it's all going wrong today. We live up here, and these pieces live here and here. Destroying things everywhere I go today. That's case number two. That's all our extra bits stored away. Now when it comes to storage over here, it's a little bit different. So we remove our signs. I'm gonna hinge back our windows and remove this whole piece. Yeah. The sign's going to click into there. This sign's going to click into there. And this bit here goes over here. Uh, there, I think. 
And then we're going to bring our bay back in and leave it slightly curved. And that's going to attach to the spine of the book. And we can close up here. I think that was right the first time. <laughs> Too far. There we go. Here and here. Now, I don't know if you can see just down the length. The reason we didn't want corners on any of these bricks in this row here is because they actually conflict with the corner of the bay when it's folded in like that. So that, if you push it, you'll see it's hold everything in exactly the width we want, which is our six studs. Everything's touching something else, stopping it squishing flat and thus destroying the build. So it's actually protecting itself inside the cover. Let's bring in our second volume. And there, again, not particularly fun to look at, but all of these parts are facing towards the wall or on a shelf too high for me to see anyway. So that was Ollivander's, our second module of four in our Diagonally in the Moments mock build. If you enjoyed this video, please leave us a like. If you've got any questions or comments, about this build please leave them in the comments below I do try and answer comments where i can and if you'd like to see more diagonally in a moment mock builds then please subscribe to brickinet bye